Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am getting straight into the nails. For the base color, I'm going to be using Kira Sky's White Peach Gel Polish. This is a really, really pastel yellow gel polish color. I want to go ahead and say I did not completely remove the gel polish from my natural nails before applying the jelly tips. Please just ignore that. I did not properly prep my nails for this manicure. I have to say I really love this color, but I was having some issues with my gel polish this day. I was experiencing some separation between the gel polish pigment and the gel itself. I tried shaking and rolling the bottle multiple times throughout this application and nothing was seeming to really help. I also felt like this gel polish color for some reason was being a lot more runny than Kira Sky's typical gel polishes. I'm not sure if it's just because I haven't used this one but only once like a year ago or if it was just from a bad batch of gel polishes. I'm not sure but either way this color was still absolutely gorgeous, the perfect shade of yellow that I was looking for. I did end up having to do three layers of this color to make sure that I had a very opaque solid color of gel polish for the base of my nails. Like I kind of said, I was having some issues with the separation which was causing some streaking. So yeah, I don't exactly blame Kira Sky for this one. Maybe I just wasn't doing something right. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. This is going to be a very basic, simplistic type of nail set. I do want to go ahead and say that this is a recreation nail set from CC's underscore CC's underscore on Instagram. Look how pretty all of these nails are. Very obviously, I am doing the Winnie the Pooh nail set from this picture. I really loved all of them and I actually ended up doing the frog set on my other hand. I didn't film it, but I will include some footage at the very end so you guys can see how it turned out. I have actually really been into Korean and Japanese style nail art lately. It's basically like all I've been looking at aside from character nail art. I actually already did an Easter themed manicure with this style. They turned out really cute. I also didn't record that one, but I do want to still show you guys the picture of it. These nails were kind of like a filler manicure for me, so that is why I didn't end up recording them. I just think this style of nail art is so cute. Basically, no one does this on long nails, so even the length that I'm doing today is longer than most, but honestly, this is like the shortest length that I like to wear, so that is why I'm doing it over this length. Please ignore how badly this gel polish application was done. I was just struggling so bad with that gel polish color. So here are the nails after three layers of that gel polish color. Next, I am taking Kira Sky's Golden Hour Gel Polish. This is a really like mustardy yellow color. I'm just placing some of this down on my tile, which is a nail art palette for me. I'm also taking Kira Sky's non-wipe gel top coat and I'm placing some of this down just beside the yellow color. I will be mixing these two colors together to get a jelly yellow. Kira Sky does have jelly yellow colors, but I don't have any of them, so I do have to make my own for this video. For the 3D nail art, I am using this 3D, 4D, or 5D sculpting gel. I'm not exactly sure which one this is. I have to go back and look at the listing. But this is a very thick consistency gel that is perfect for sculpting any type of 3D nail art. This Amazon listing did come with four different colors, so I am using the clear one. I initially did not think that this clear 3D gel was like as clear as it actually is. I kind of thought that it was more foggy, which is why I haven't used it up until now. I am using a Nails by Devs silicone sculpting tool to pick up the gel. I did almost forget, but do make sure to put some gloves on before working with this product. You do not want to get any uncured gel on your skin. That can lead to contact dermatitis, which is not good. You do not want to have any allergic reactions to gel products. So from the initial bead of gel that I picked up, I had way too much. So I did start cutting it down with the chisel side of the silicone tool. I'm taking these smaller beads of gel and I'm just rolling them into a small hot dog type of shape. I'm going to go ahead and directly place this down on the nail. I'm not really trying to sculpt it out with my fingers because I will be using the tool for this. And I placed another line of gel beside this one. This is going to be like drips of honey. 
so you do want to make sure it's as close to the cuticle as possible without touching. Once I have the gel placed, I am taking the pointy side of the silicone tool and I'm going to start very gently sculpting the gel into place. So I am going for a dripping honey effect. So I do kind of want the middle area of the drip to be thinner than the bottom portion. And also the area around the cuticle is going to be slightly thicker. This is going to make the dripping effect. Basically, this is going to give the same effect of the slime drips that people draw around the cuticle area. We're just doing this with a 3D product. For the drip on the left, it was a little bit too big for what I wanted. So I did separate it into two different drips. One of them is smaller and the one on the left is bigger. I did want to alternate the lengths of these drips just to give it a more natural feel. Once I have the initial drip shape, I am going ahead and smoothing it around the cuticle and I'm going to go ahead and touch up anything necessary. For this type of product, it also doesn't really self-level so you do want to try to get it as smooth as possible before you cure. Once I have it like I want, I did go ahead and cure for a full 60 seconds. Once the 3D gel is cured, I am going in with the liner brush and the transparent yellow color that I mixed up, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint over the 3D gel. For this, I'm just trying to get a very even coverage of the transparent gel polish color. Also, anytime you paint over something 3D like this, you also want to make sure to cover the edges very well. You do not want any of the 3D gel color showing through. In this case, the gel is clear, so it's not quite as obvious as using like a white 3D gel, but it is still going to be lacking in color, which is not what I want. Once I've painted that layer of gel, I did go ahead and cure for another full minute under the Cure Sky nail lamp, and I'm going to go ahead and repeat the exact same process for the pinky. Now I know that the inspiration for this nail set is the one that I showed earlier, but I do have to say that Nails by Dev is also a really big inspiration for me doing this nail set. She recently did a Winnie the Pooh nail set and it was so cute. I really love how she did the drips of honey in hers. Of course, she did hand paint Winnie the Pooh on one of her fingers, which was absolutely amazing. I just wanted something a little bit more simple, which is why I did lean towards this style of nail art. I did also want to mention that this is the same sculpting gel that is going viral on my TikTok account right now. I did post a little tutorial doing the 3D flower for the Glam Cowgirl nail set that I did recently and that video just hit a million views, which is absolutely crazy. A lot of people ask me what product I'm using and it is this one. I did put a big drop of the same gel polish color down on the palette because I wanted this to be the actual gel polish color, not mixed with any clear. And taking the nail art brush, we're going to be doing a very tiny bumblebee. For this, I am just doing two dots side by side. One of them is a little bit bigger than the other one. The bigger one is going to be the body of the bumblebee and the smaller dot is going to be its head. I'm also going to be doing another one on the corner of the index nail. Once I have the base color of the bees done, I did go ahead and cure. Next, I am taking Kira Sky's gel art liner. This is the color white canvas. I just placed a little bit down on the palette. Also taking negative space, I'm going to place some of this down as well. Taking the fine liner brush again, I am picking up the white gel and I'm going to go ahead and do the wings of the bumblebee. For this, I kind of just did them together so it looks a little bit weird but I will be adding a line to separate these into two wings. I kind of tried to start the wings where the head meets the body but it does lean a little bit more towards the body side. Once I have the wings done, I did go ahead and cure. Next, I am taking the smallest amount of the black gel polish on the liner brush. So the first thing I'm doing is going ahead and adding the stripes on the body. I went ahead and added a very tiny dot for the eye. I'm also going to go ahead and start outlining the wings. Like I said earlier, I am just splitting these into two different wings. One of the wings is slightly tucked behind the other one. And I'm also going to finish outlining the entire bee. For any type of detailed nail art, you want to make sure not to have too much polish on your brush. This is going to give you a lot of precision with your lines. I will admit my outlines for these bees are not extremely perfect because I wasn't going for a perfect type of nail art. And next, I'm just going to move on to the dotted lines that basically outlines where the bee has traveled. 
I'm not sure what to call this honestly, so I'm just gonna call it like the travel lines, I guess. I don't really know what this is called. I started at the back of the bee and just did a little loop going down towards the bottom of the nail and that is basically it. I'm going to repeat the exact same thing for the other bee as well. This bee will not have any of the travel lines, this is just the bee itself. Before I cure all of the outlines for the bees, I am taking a dotting tool and picking up the white gel liner color and I'm going to do a very simple dotted flower towards the cuticle of my index nail. I did also go ahead and cure for a full minute. Then taking the same yellow color, I'm just adding a dot in the center of the flower. I did go ahead and cure that. I am now taking Kira Sky's top coat. This is for the jelly tip system and I'm going to go ahead and top coat everything. For this style of nail art, anything that is 3D, you also want to top coat over top of. I usually didn't like when things like rhinestones are top coated over top of because the way the gel like bends from the nail to the rhinestone just doesn't look good to me. But this style of nail art just looks really good to me when the whole thing is top coated. To me, it just really gives off a cute, kawaii, like softer type of nail art design. And I think that's kind of why I like it. I do make sure to wipe off any of the excess gel that bubbles around the 3D nail art too much. I do like the look, but I don't want the top coat to take away from the 3D nail art. I'm also going to go ahead and add a layer of top coat to the thumbnail as well. After applying the top coat to all of the nails, I did go ahead and cure. Now for the fun part, I am taking the white colored sculpting gel. This is the same one as the clear one, it's just a different color. I am going to make sure to roll it into a ball and I'm going to place it down in the center of the thumbnail. This is the base of the head so you do want to make sure that it's pretty big so you're able to get all of the facial details in there. I'm just taking the chisel side of the tool to flatten out the ball. I do not want this to be overly 3D so do keep that in mind. You don't want to build it so far off the nail that it catches on everything. So having a decently 3D-ness to the nail art is really important but you don't want to make it too big. Now I'm taking a smaller bead of the gel and I'm going to place this at the top of the circle. Right now it is at the bottom but this is the top of Winnie the Pooh. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and these are his ears. I'm going to try and half the amount that I used for the ears for each of his hands. This was a little bit difficult because I kept making the balls of gel a little bit too big. For these hands, you do not want them to be as big as the ears, so I am taking about half the amount of gel. You do want these to be a little bit closer together as well. So once I have the initial shape of Winnie the Pooh, I am going to go ahead and slightly touch up these circles to make them as perfect as I can. I am flattening them out a little bit because I do not want them to stick off the nail too much. It was honestly pretty hot in my nail room as I was filming this, so the little balls of gel was kind of starting to self-level into the bigger circle, so I kept having to go back and slightly separate the ears from the head as well as the arms from the head. This was a little bit annoying, but honestly it wasn't too bad compared to using other gel products. Once I have the initial shape of Winnie the Pooh done, I did go ahead and cure for a full minute. Going back with the Golden Hour gel polish, I am going to go ahead and paint over the entire shape with the nail art brush. Ideally, you would want to sculpt with the color that you're going for, but I didn't have a yellow sculpting gel so I did have to use a different color and then paint over top after it was finished. Again, this is kind of the same thing as using a top coat. You want to make sure to remove any of the excess gel around these sculpting parts. That way it doesn't take away from the 3D detail that you've been putting into it. I have had quite a few people ask me if you need to apply a top coat after curing the sculpting gel. And honestly, I would say no, but it does cure with a very, very slightly tacky layer. So I would at least make sure to remove that with some rubbing alcohol. When I used this gel for the 3D flower for the Glam Cowgirl set, I did apply a matte gel top coat over top, but that was only because I didn't want my flower to be shiny. But yeah, if you do not mind the gel being a little bit shiny, you really don't have to apply a top coat. I also unfortunately had to apply a second layer of gel polish over this 3D sculpture. I really didn't want to have to do that, but I wanted Winnie the Pooh to be a little bit more opaque, so I did end up doing a second layer of color. Going back with the black liner gel and the liner brush, 
I'm going to go ahead and start drawing out the face. I'm just starting in the center of the bigger circle and we're going to be doing an upside down triangle. This is going to be his nose. I also did a little line above the triangle and this is basically like the fold of his snout. Then taking a dotting tool, I'm going to go ahead and dot on his eyes. Going back with the liner brush, we are going to be doing the eyebrows. These are very high up on the head, but I feel like it gives him a really cute, like curious look to him. It definitely makes it look more like Winnie the Pooh. Honestly, I was having so much trouble with the right eyebrow. Like I redid this about five times. For some reason, it just wasn't quite looking right. And I think it just had to do with the angle that I was drawing it on. Next, I am taking the pink sculpting gel color. This is 003. This did come with four different colors, but I'm only going to be using three of them. I'm going to be picking up an extremely small bead of this gel. Initially, I picked up a decently big size of the sculpting gel and I just kept cutting it until it got smaller and smaller. For this, I did need very tiny dots and this is the size that I ended up using. I just placed them inside the lid of the gel container and picking them up with the pointed side of the silicone tool, I'm just going to be placing them for his cheeks. I am smashing them down just a little bit, but I don't want to make these too flat. This is like the little blushing for the character. I felt like this was so cute. It was one of the things I really liked about the 3D art. Once I have it where I want, I did go ahead and cure. So once I've cured everything in place, the last thing I'm going to do is go back with the top coat gel and apply this to the entire nail. Again, I am re-top coating the base of the nail as well, and I am making sure to remove any of the extra gel that clumps up around the 3D art. This does also include over the surface of his face, especially because of the blushing. Once I've applied the gel top coat, I did go ahead and cure. After everything is cured, I am taking my cuticle oil pen. This is pineapple scented. It smells amazing. I'm just going to go ahead and apply some cuticle oil to all of the nails. Since curing the thumb and applying the cuticle oil, I did very gently clean up around the cuticle and sidewall areas of the nails. It's still not extremely perfect, but it's still a lot better than it was before I did that. And here are the nails. Look how cute these turned out. I love how simple they are, but they're still extra at the same time. I'm really loving to do 3D nail art lately. I feel like it's so fun and it looks so cute at the same time. I also want to show you guys the other hand as well. Like I said, I didn't record this one. I did sculpt out the lily pad with the same products that I used for Winnie the Pooh. For the raindrops, I did use a rhinestone gel. And for the thumb, this is actually a charm from Shein. I just went ahead and glued it down on the nail and top coated around the whole thing. I was not about to sculpt out a 3D frog with my non-dominant hand right now. But let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Do make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!